Jones of Volcanic Ash. And Cambridge Jones is with us for all the Sunday papers. Live through till 10 o'clock, still to come, uh, Cambridge is with us uh, and his wonderful shirt, which both Gillian and I covered. I don't think we'll both fit in it at the same time. No, but not for me. Yeah, all the way from Paris, <laughs> very smart. Yeah, no, no, just stop, stop it. Um, because we've got to tell you about Nick Clegg, uh, who's said to be at risk of causing tensions within the coalition. It's for the Sunday papers, Cambridge Jones, award-winning photographer, broadcaster and ace shirt wearer. We do like all the way from <laughs> Paris. <laughs> yeah, we like that. <laughs> Trying to find the tighter match is going to be the problem. However, uh, he, does, he makes ones with ties built in. Oh, really? Oh, oh I like the idea of that. It'd be great <laughs> getting dressed in the morning at half past three. On a just, Sunday yeah, morning. Yeah, yeah. quite. Um, now, you've gone for the, um, the Miller bands and the fallout um, because you are a brother yourself. I am a brother, and, and, and it's, it's the family element rather than the politics. That I mean, I'm fascinated by the politics, but I, the whole notion of two brothers... Well, and the mother herself, the idea that you could produce two sons who are potential prime ministers and then they decide to fight and make sure they do their best to stop each other. And very publicly, it's yeah. yeah. And they're, well, they're, you mentioned the mum, it must be tearing her apart, actually, reading all of this stuff and well, seeing this played out publicly. Yeah, and she's mentioned in here, and some, there's a sentence in here which said it's, it's the political equivalent of fratricide. You know, they're mm. just out there to basically kill each other's chances off. And I, it's, it feels to me like a Shakespearean play. You've got these extraordinary characters, both wanting to do good but actually being drawn down to this horrible kind of um can't think of the right Shakespearean um, parallel. But maybe there's another twist in the plot because, of course, Miliband's in the wings, David Miliband, i.e. waiting uh, for his brother to fail, perhaps, but will they actually then allow Ed Balls in? It's, there's lots yeah. of permutations uh, that the papers talk about. Well, that's about. the real danger, isn't it? That they, they kill each other off yeah. and somebody else marches through the middle. Is, is there a happy ending for them? I mean, how, how are things with your, your brother? Have you sort of patched it up? And uh, I didn't say I'd fallen out with my brother. <laughs> I just thought I'd throw that in. I think, I think it's a mistake not to go to your brother's wedding for reception, which I think he did in London, didn't mm. he? And um, I think you can you can repair, you can patch up lots of stuff, but I think not going to the wedding reception. Because other members of the family then become involved. Yeah, and you, you can never rewind on that. You can't say, I'm sorry, I'll make it up to you now. Because that, the moment's gone. Yes, and that's the most important day of their life. And, and I think you'll, regret, you'll live to regret that. But I suppose it does tell us something about the brothers, that they're prepared to put politics before family. Yes, um, and, and indeed some people, didn't they, said at the time, if you want to know Ed Miliband's kind of determination, just look at the fact he stood against his brother. He's, yeah. he's clearly a capable determination. Yeah, well, there we are, yeah. Now, the latest on uh, the Syrian conflict, um, and we've got the Sunday Times report here on the front. Yes, now this is ostensibly about um, soldiers defecting and being asked to do stuff and then seeing what they've been asked to do and turning up and thinking, these aren't really the villains I was led to believe, and then defecting. But what's caught my eye, both in your coverage and, and in the pictures they've used here, is in a world where we're not allowed to get journalists in and we're not allowed to take pictures, is the power of the technology is giving us to see this firsthand. So you're, you're able to show these stories and, and they've used the pictures from these phones and whatever technology. And it seems to me not only did we have this in the beginning of the Arab Spring in the Twitter and, and Facebook communication, but now technology is making us, it, for me as a, as a viewer, I'm yeah. watching that and going... Citizen journalism, they call it. Right, and I don't know what I feel about that in principle, but I do know that in this case where we're not allowed to see anything else, it's very powerful because it, it, although I've heard all the reports, I suddenly see pictures and I go, whoa, that... that I when you see the army firing on a yeah. bunch of civilians. And, and even though I absolutely take the point it's not authenticated and, and verified, Very, yeah. it's nevertheless extraordinarily powerful. Yeah. Uh, the Archbishop's attack on the coalition, which caused all sorts of shockwaves last week, has still got reverberations in the Sunday Times this week. Yeah, and, and I don't, I, I've read all the papers on this, and I don't know where I stand, really. And, and I think it's, i.e., I'm not sure to what degree one thinks the Archbishop should or shouldn't be saying this stuff. But what I've most enjoyed is some of the headlines. Like, there was, is it the Mirror that has, um, no, one of them has Pew Labour. <laughs> the Pew Labour's... Uh, P-E-W. P -E -W. P -E -W. <laughs> uh, another one says, get back to your, uh, your 
no, give your day job a bash, bish. <laughs> so they're just having such fun. But I don't know where I stand on the notion of, I mean, the church presumably has always had a role in politics. Um, well, it's always had a social conscience. I mean, I right. think that's what he's saying. It's, it's not that he wants directly to get involved in politics, but the church should have a social conscience about matters that affect people. Right, and he has indeed attacked both sides, yes, I think. Yeah. I, I think what's interesting is that it, what he's saying appears to be slightly out of kilter with most of politics in that it's quite statist it's quite saying mm. the state should look and there's a lot of politics now that says well actually that's not that's the old way of thinking so it's almost like he's creating a new divide um, church and state well there's a an argument to be developed for a sunday anyway let's move on to the express because we've got a day in the life of generation youtube and it's really yeah. scott yeah who's made some phenomenal films some of my favorite films um, and he's now decided that he's going to make a movie out of eighty thousand people's youtube entrance so he asked these people to to on one particular day to film something, put it on YouTube, and he will edit it into his movie. Wow! And I'm what a thinking, fascinating how idea! How does that work? And I'm, it, it sort of it seems to me to have a continuity problem because you've got not going to have any characters who go through this film, and I don't. Well, but, like quite a lot of films I've seen recently. <laughs> <laughs> and there's, there's that. <laughs> Maybe that's the new approach. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah, he's just copying others. Yeah. Uh, now, holy kryptonite, as it declares, Superman returns without his underpants outside his tights. Okay, that's a trend. What's he going to look like? No underpants. It's extraordinary. <laughs> I mean, you, in the, I've got this in a black and white photocopy, so it's not quite so evident. But when when you see it, there we go behind you. There we go. It? And the idea that he's not going to have these red underpants is going to firstly ruin lots of comedians' jokes, and secondly, it's, they're, well, they're not just playing with the underpants; they're playing with all sorts of. It things. It looks like one of those sort of old Marxist posters from <laughs> the exactly communist right, era of Russia, isn't it? It you know? does, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. No, no, I'm not so sure that's going to work. They're relaunching him, I think. That's it looks like he's got dungarees on there. <laughs> Or le leotard, doesn't it? Maybe so he could pinch that two-ton T-shirt that we've been telling people about this morning. <laughs> that would fit him, wouldn't it? Cambridge as ever, thank you for your thank selection. You. Great to see you again. We'll Thanks. see you soon.